Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today to Mother Tales. I am Chanel. And I'm Princess. And we have a very wonderful special guest today yes, to help do. us discuss birthing options for mothers, whether it be home births or hospital births. So, without further ado, would you go ahead and introduce yourself, special guest? Yes, I shall. <laughs> My name is Alisa Hansen. Mm-hmm. I am from Milwaukee. I currently live in Kansas City, Missouri. Awesome. And I am a stay-at-home mom of two beautiful children, a Aww. son and a daughter. And I am also a doula. <laughs> awesome. Also, what yep. is the best part of being a mother? The best part of being a mother for me is to see my kids interact with each other, mm-hmm. um, seeing how they, just their overall, just their growth from when they were little up until mm-hmm. now, just to see how they're just adapting to the world. Mm-hmm. And just really so smart and just soaking in so much information and yeah. just actually mm-hmm. seeing yeah. it into play mm-hmm. and the things that you're teaching them and they're reflecting it back to you. To you. Pretty, yeah. pretty dope. Yeah. So that's the greatest thing about being a mom. How old are your little ones? My son is three. Mm-hmm. He'll be four in November. And my daughter just turned two. September oh, 2nd. Oh, awesome. So you have you got your hands full with two mm-hmm. itty bitties. But yep. it's so nice to see them sink like that. Yeah. Because they get to play, play with, with each, each other. other. Yeah, and, and they actually communicate with each other, which mm-hmm. is something that is kind of weird. Because it's like... They understand each other. They actually understand <laughs> Yeah, when you don't... <laughs> Um, even when I don't understand mm-hmm. them, and I'm like, "What did he just say?" Okay, well, as long as they ain't crying or fighting, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm so, you know, you know. So that's pretty dope. Okay. Yeah. Well, I wanted to start off by asking you, ladies, since we've had such a busy life as mothers, mm-hmm. um, how was your weekend? Would you- would you oh. like to go first? Sure. Um, my weekend was interesting. Um, mm-hmm. The flights were short. I had a connecting flight through O'Hare. Mm-hmm. And I got to spend some time with my mom, grocery awesome. shopping, and eating with my brother. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, spend time with you ladies. So, so far, so good. So far, so good. good. How long are you here for? it? I'm leaving tomorrow. Aww. Yeah, so well, actually, yay, because she gets to go back somewhere oh, yeah. other than here. Yep, and my son is in preschool, so I gotta oh, make yeah. sure he's doing, doing his, his work. His work. Mm-hmm. Interacting with his teachers. <laughs> oh, is he school. in school? In school or is not he... in person, but it's virtual. virtual. Okay. Yeah. So not he has an iPad that too. he signs in. He knows how to log into his like in his you know really? sessions through Microsoft Teams. That's so he's very independent. So that's pretty. My son <laughs> has started virtual school too, and he just turned five. And he's very independent with the iPad too. Oh. So I was like, okay, so you don't need me. That's good. <laughs> if you don't need me, that makes my life a little bit easier because I work from home. So yeah, how does how do you deal with that? The, the so balance? the balance is pretty good. It, I was so stressed out because I was listening to everyone else and how they were saying it was going to be so bad, mm-hmm. and I was just anticipating a hell of virtual learning. Yeah. But when I saw that it was as simple as tapping it, him just tapping mute, he knows how to tap mute when his teacher doesn't Mm -hmm. want him to talk, he knows how to tap it when it's time to talk, he raises his hand, Mm -hmm. they got a little raise your hand button, he knows all of it. It's really neat, it's like, man, he's only three, but it's like, he's so (laughs) technically inclined, it's Mm -hmm. really bananas, and then like... He actually gets excited about seeing his teachers and interacting with some of the, like, the little YouTube videos that they show him. He mm-hmm. wants to be a play for them mm-hmm. and yeah. interact with them that way. So I like it so far. And it's a Montessori school, so I'm trying to figure out how that works. Like, yeah. I know Montessori is different than like your traditional school. Mm-hmm. So they want him to do like more Montessori like activities and then you're trying to make, you know, make sure that we... Actually, do it. At <laughs> yeah. Home. My question is, how do the kids interact with each other during virtual school? Do they do any interaction with each other? Like, do they see each other? Like, hi, like even like, YouTube 
with high J's. Yeah, so the teacher now is really working with the kids to learn each other's names. Mm -hmm. So as an engagement, um, they do have them acknowledge each other. Mm -hmm. Like right now, they're doing knee bags. So they raise their hand to give someone a compliment about their me bag, but they have to say their name. Mm -hmm. So Jace, he had some one boy in his class, I believe his name is Eli. He's like, Eli, I really like your Spider-Man because I got a Spider-Man too. (laughs) (laughs) So it's so adorable just to hear them speak. Because their voices are so little. Yeah, they are. <laughs> They're so innocent. Yeah. Yeah, my son is focused on the teacher. He don't really acknowledge anybody else but the teacher. <laughs> the teacher. Yeah. Very loudly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. so how was your weekend, princess? My weekend was busy. So like we be- me and you. Yes. Both busy. We had what? Uh, I think I seen you all weekend. I, well, you did. <laughs> Because <laughs> we had a photo shoot, photo shoot, shopping for the photo shoot. Yeah, shopping for the photo shoot because we were uh, procrastinating. Yes. <laughs> it was very terrible because we both were online looking. That is nice. That's really good. Right. But neither one of us made the actual decision purchase. to purchase right. the stuff that we actually agreed on. We was like, oh yeah, that would be great. That would right. be great. That's cute. Why we ain't buying nothing? Oh, God. We got caught up in other things. I think we were just procrastinating. It could be bad, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It happens. Yeah. But, yeah, so we had the photo shoot, uh, game night last night. Oh, yeah, night. game night. We had game night with the TDR, TDR Network. How was that? It was nice. It was really we nice. Had- the new podcasters right. there, so we didn't okay. really know anybody, anybody. <laughs> but they kind of migrated towards us to start having conversations and stuff, so it was, it was nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was really fun. Yeah. I like meeting everybody and learning what podcasts they were oh, on, yeah. and a few of them, they uh, tuned in to us, so it's pretty excited about yeah. that. I was like, oh, you listen, oh. We even okay. had some that want to, you know, be featured on our show, too. So. Yeah. It's a good way to network. My day, so today actually, today. Which, what is this? Sunday, which is the beginning of the week. I went to go try on wedding dresses. Mm. And they were very pretty, very sparkly. Some were very matronly, very grandma ish. And I found one that I absolutely adore. It's so pretty. Oh, my God. But I don't <laughs> want to, like, you know, because this was my first time going dress shopping. Mm-hmm. I just was like, you know what? I love you, but I'm going to leave you here. I'm going to leave you here. <laughs> and I'm going to go to these other shops, and I'm going to see where we go from there. Yeah, shop around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I don't want to have my heart set on one thing. Right. And go somewhere else or see something else. And I'm like, damn it. I should have bought that one. Right. Yeah. So, rolling into our topic, which is birthing choices, I'm really excited about this topic. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I mean, like, because I always thought, you know, maybe I would be able to handle a home birth or something like that. But me personally, I could only carry both of my babies up to seven months. So, it was pretty scary. Um, my both my boys were born prematurely, and I was like, if this was like the times where we didn't have like the medical personnel mm-hmm. and stuff, oh babies wouldn't. I don't think they would have made it because I was like, I didn't know anything about anything about being pregnant, contractions, or what my options were. Even with all of the teachings and the classes that you go to, they give you like a thousand pamphlets. But it's like, really, can I just have somebody that can tell me what their experience was? You know, so everyone's different with how they learn. Like, some people like to read pamphlets. I don't like to read pamphlets. I don't like to. Like, <laughs> you can watch videos and everything, but just having that one on one connection. That was something that I found really interesting about doulas Mm -hmm. is because you really get to develop this relationship with another mother or just a person who knows what they're talking about, especially when it comes to the woman's body. 
because if you don't know enough about your body you don't know especially when you're pregnant because there's so many things that are different Mm -hmm. once you're uh pregnant it's just like okay I didn't know my body did that or I didn't know because I didn't even know that when you actually have your baby that your pelvis adjusts to you know the baby actually coming out so one of my questions is what made you get into being a doula (laughs) Okay. So what made me want to pursue being a doula was it was after my daughter was born, Mm -hmm. my youngest child, her name Mm -hmm. is Eden, and I um, was actually having a really hard time with the what we call the fourth trimester. So you know the Mm -hmm. first, second, third trimester, Mm -hmm. and then after baby begins, the first three months after baby, that's the what they call the fourth trimester and I was mm-hmm. having a really hard time battling the postpartum depression it was actually more severe mm-hmm. than with my firstborn mm-hmm. and um it wasn't until the six week appointment with my midwife where mm-hmm. she usually kind of just checks the baby six weeks after birth make sure everything is okay mm-hmm. she did ask me if I did have any family planning mm-hmm. decisions <laughs> Um, as far as like expanding my family or not, I'm like not right now. Um, right. <laughs> um, but she kept emphasizing even before then that you know, have you considered becoming a doula? I think that you would be good at it. Mm-hmm. Um, mind you, she mentioned it before, even when I was pregnant with my son. But I just kind of brushed it off because I didn't really think I would be good at it. But mm-hmm. it was more of just kind of the more educated I was about like the body what it's capable of doing Mm -hmm. um you know while being pregnant during labor and birth and even how your body adjusts after baby I just was like there's so much things that I feel like a lot of people may not know Mm -hmm. more specifically in our community as you know African-American women and I just wanted to just be that for mainly for us was like the goal that I had in mind but I just think everybody just yeah. you know, needs it, whether they were African American or not. Just right. Needs to know. So that's how I started. I just wanted to I'm gonna be a doula because I wanna educate. Yeah. I wanna tell people everything that they need to know or every, everything that they should know so they can make the best, well informed decision. Right. Yes. For their one of the most ir- like irreplaceable memories of their life, which is the birth of their children. Yes. So, I, I love the like way you put that. Irre- yeah. Irreplaceable. Another thing that I saw uh, when I was looking up doulas and things, I uh, saw I searched that um, the mothers say it's a sacred and it's personal when they have a home birth. It's sacred and personal. Mm-hmm. I like how they worded that as well. That's <laughs> nice. Yeah. So when you started be like studying to become a doula, like what was the process of you becoming a doula? Well, here's the thing. Um, being a doula, um, it would be nice to go through tr- like formal training. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of women do pursue their certification. Like I'm still in the midst of pursuing my certification, but I'm not a certified doula. Mm-hmm. So, me being a doula is just based off of just my experience of having my own like home births mm-hmm. and just kind of just tapping into my clients or you know women that need support and just mm-hmm. kind of just knowing what they need just based off of like the experiences of probably what I would would have liked mm-hmm. and just kind of delve into that. So, you know, being a doula is is kind of like. Um, it's really no cookie cutter way to kind of be one you can yeah. be, you can technically be one today if you want to um but You're it would be nice I'm a doula to kind of, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. doula if you want to. Um, but it's more of like a passion and kind of just wanting to like what kind of doula you want to be because there's mm-hmm. also doulas you know that are for people who are you know transitioning from mm-hmm. life to death mm-hmm. there's doulas there's doulas that only specifically want to care for women for po- postpartum after baby really there's doulas when you that, say life and death is that like the life and death of a child like or? when they're de- whether if it's a death of a child okay mm-hmm. um, a stillborn a miscarriage or okay. uh, an adult oh. who is dying oh they okay. have a terminal illness and there oh. are death doulas okay really that. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. What? Right. Yeah. <laughs> what? 
Yeah, I know, right? I didn't know that. That until, like, just caught it. me so But there's off death doulas, the and then there's even like one for people who are family planning and want to have a baby, and they're not pregnant yet, but want to get ready to prepare their, you know, bodies for for baby. So mm-hmm. there's doulas wow. that deals with the fertility portion of it too. Okay. Wait. But the most typical ones are perinatal and like up until like and then postpartum. Mm-hmm. So, so have you attended any births yet? Yeah, I've attended a few. Yeah. Ooh, can mm-hmm. you tell us that experience? Yeah, I would like to know <laughs> that. <laughs> sure. So um, my first home birth was actually... Hi, Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was, I was actually a backup doula for... Mm-hmm. Um, for her birth um, and it was um, it was definitely after 12 hours and she uh-huh. was really like you know getting kind of like burnt out it was a you know as a home birth yeah. and it was pretty you know well it was like 15 hours I want to say but they say that for the first 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 time moms it's pretty typical, mm-hmm. like 12 to 15 hour labor or 15, you know 12 to 18 I want to say hours are the average mm-hmm. hours give and take for women to labor or, yeah you know delivering but that was my first home birth so it was nice Aww. it came in around 2 a.m things Ooh. didn't really give a go by the time it was like five something almost 6 p.m she had her daughter really yeah wow and we tried everything like we you know had her in and out the pool yeah when she wanted to rest we allowed her to rest uh-huh. if she wanted to eat we allowed her to eat mm-hmm. if she was thirsty we made sure that she make sure she stayed hydrated mm-hmm. make sure we got her body moving because you know we want to make sure that labor is progressing mm-hmm. and we're gauging it by the intensity of her contractions mm-hmm. and stuff like that so in a nutshell that was pretty much it with the home birth but that's cool she had a beautiful baby girl and Aww. now she's one mm-hmm. she turned one in july so really yep. so do you still interact with the families after they had their child mm-hmm. i'll still okay. keep in touch you okay. know, through facebook messenger through text you know mm-hmm. i'm actually seeing one of them like in a couple weeks we're okay. like a cool halloween like photo shoot oh, type of thing yes. so um, try to make it to you know each other's you know kids birthdays if we can right. and just, that's cute. yeah get yeah. you know you kind of so like, i feel Create I'm still in touch with my doula. Like she just had her baby. Like really? my doula had her fourth baby. Ooh. Mm-hmm. It's a girl, and she has three boys. And so Aww. this is like her last baby, and it's a baby girl. So Aww. is that what she wanted? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my god! Yeah. So she is like that's so just exciting. Over the moon happy. So yeah, she just had a baby, and we're like really close. Right. And she was one of the people that encouraged me to become a doula too, and uh-huh. helped me out too. So it's like I had a. I love started. it when mamas support mamas. Yeah. Mamas. Yes, mamas <laughs> support mamas. <laughs> that is so sweet. And congratulations on your baby girl. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so, with being a doula, are there any, like, anything that you have to prepare for as, like, with equipment? Like, what all type of equipment goes into home births? For doulas, um, specifically, <laughs> yeah. um, it's nice to have, um, I usually would have um, oils, mm-hmm. so like, um, preferably organic, because you just don't know, you know, people are maybe sensitive yeah. to that. Um, I do have essential oils, such as like lavender, rosemary, all types of nice essential oils that you can use either in a diffuser or in mm-hmm. a spray. Depending if the client has a certain um, specific scent that they like admire for their aromatherapy, because you mm-hmm. know, with home birth, you kind of want to set a, a mood and set an environment for the birther to be calm and relaxed while they're, you know, having their baby while they're laboring. Yeah. Um, massaging like stress balls, massager balls, whether it be um, have them to roll on their backs mm-hmm. or on their legs. Um, Honey sticks are nice. Honey sticks. Honey yeah. honey sticks. What in the world? A honey so, st- yeah, honey sticks are nice for women who are probably um, probably a little hungry, but they mm-hmm. don't want to eat anything, and they just need a burst of energy, and they're tired, so they take a honey stick and take the honey from it, and it's supposed to give them a little energy to kind of keep going wow. with the labor. So just, you know, essential. That's funny, because my next question was, can you eat during labor? <laughs> Um, for home births, yeah, you okay. can. You we actually encourage women to eat. Um, really, 
you know, don't eat anything. <laughs> don't eat anything. <laughs> but don't but be just, sitting there eating a bag of Doritos. <laughs> no I mean, you probably can if you want to, but, you know, <laughs> such as light foods, foods that will give you energy, foods mm-hmm. that, you know, full of protein, even peanut butter and apple. Mm-hmm. If it's mm-hmm. a veggie snack, is yeah. it, you know, stuff, something like that, that should be fine. Yeah, but okay. we encourage women to eat because you need the food to turn into energy, energy to labor. Know. In the hospital, I think hospital, they in, like in they the tell, tell us yeah. not to eat. Like they within. told me, yeah. no. I was starving. I was starving. I was too- <laughs> Listen, they, look, you had to have a baby at home. Like, where's the food? <laughs> Yeah, and I used to I asked twice. I was like, "Can I have something to eat? A snack, a cracker, anything?" They're like, "No." Uh, they bring us water. Yeah, we what, encourage apple juice? women to eat. Yeah. Like, if it's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, <laughs> mm-hmm. I had a strawberry smoothie right before my I was getting ready to birth my son. Really? I had a boiled egg. No, see, see, I was on E. <laughs> <laughs> I had a whole boiled egg before having my daughter. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah. I made they made sure I was drinking every you know. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go, people. Sure I was hydrated. That's your first comparison of <laughs> if hospital you like birth, to eat. Yeah. right? First, first comparison: hospital versus versus doulas. Okay, and you know they may be hospitals that probably would bend on that rule, or even mm-hmm. birthing centers. I know mm-hmm. they have birthing centers that are probably more you know leaning Lean. on wanting to give you know it may be different. oh yeah they might give or take on that, and that's why it's good to have a birthing plan, especially when yeah. you're pregnant, um, especially when before it gets too close, and you might change your mind too. So yeah. I encourage women or birthers to have a birthing plan to mm-hmm. write out if you are going to have your baby in a hospital or at home. Mm-hmm. You know what would be the comfort measures that you want to take if you want to eat or not would you like somebody to be there to make sure you stay hydrated who would you like to be do you want your you know your partner in the tub with you or not do you Mm -hmm. um like to get checked to see how far along dilated you are or not Mm -hmm. you know even after baby do you want your baby to have certain you know like eye ointments and stuff like that Mm -hmm. or not like all that i feel like should be considered because you might be in the middle of labor to really think about that and it just yeah it and is that like process. some type of is there some type of questionnaire or process interviewing process that a doula and a mother go through to see what everything that the mother does want and doesn't want um well i feel like the mom should already have set in stone what i would call her deal breakers yeah if she wants to have a home birth or a hospital birth um, even in either setting, what would she prefer, what she wouldn't prefer? Mm-hmm. And then from there, shop around. It's just like like you said, you was trying on wedding dresses. There was some that you really liked, but you didn't want to commit and you want to see what's out there. Mm-hmm. It's the same analogy applied. So, okay. you know, it's a you're building a relationship and there has to be a vibe or some type of connection. Right. Um, so you would kind of want to bank on that. Um, the doula should be able to explain about all that she does, her mm-hmm. processes, um, as far as her methods of contacting her or him, because it could be mm-hmm. a male doula. Oh, um, what? It's rare. Yeah, uh, what? I haven't. And the thing is, I've actually <laughs> yeah. just recently started to ask around, like, are there any male doulas that yeah. you know of, like in the city of Kansas City, where I say, because I yeah. don't even know if there's any, mm-hmm. probably not in walking but it might be, <laughs> Look, it might be like that me. one person yeah so <laughs> we you just want to kind of just ask them like like what do you guys do mm-hmm. and they'll, they'll explain what they do what they would normally do what they would want to you know how their meetings are are set up what they would go over mm-hmm. um how long their contract lasts how much they you know yeah. charge for their service and like their postpartum if they do postpartum care one of those for that you know and you just mm-hmm. kind of just bank on like okay I like the fact that you know you know that she does this and that and she seems so nice and she seems so sweet and you know yeah. just kind of trying to make sure to keep in contact there's some doulas like I said that are they only do home births yeah. there's some doulas that only do hospitals that cannot do home births mm-hmm. um, there's some doulas that like I said specific with like doing postpartum care only they don't want to do anything until after baby gets here mm-hmm. so you just kind of have to pick and choose what what you like about the person and how you connect with them just by talking to them so, I know you mentioned, so, oh go ahead I know you mentioned something about charge so um, for those who are curious do insurance cover doulas? 
Um, depending on the insurance provider, they mm-hmm. could. Okay. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you which ones that would be. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have to do the research yourself. Exactly. <laughs> they, yeah. So basically, you just have to do your due diligence and just mm-hmm. trying to do the research to see what your provider can cover and mm-hmm. how much you can be reimbursed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there are due lists. They may have like a, I think it's called a, I want to say NNVP number, but some type of like identifier that they can give to the client when they you know, bill okay. the insurance to get some type of like reimbursement for the money that they have okay. spent on the doula. Mm-hmm. But yeah, most of them don't <laughs> cover <laughs> them. But you'd be surprised. I think I don't want to, don't want to speak out of turn, but I think in the state of Wisconsin, if you do have Title 19 or some type of state insurance, it does have some type of program where if you do have at least the midwife or a doula, they may cover it. But I'm not entirely. Sure. Okay. We'll have to look into, we'll have yeah. into it. And then I heard you mention midwife and doula. Can you share with us the difference between the two? Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> so the doula is basically a person that is trained, mm-hmm. that is not a healthcare professional, like they don't have a healthcare specialty at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're just trained to physically and emotionally support mom, newborn baby, and you know the partner or the family of that birther, mm-hmm. um, and also to educate. Um, the birther to making whatever best well-informed decision that they can for themselves um the midwife is a trained professional specialized mm-hmm. to deliver the baby okay so they're delivering the baby they're making sure that the you know baby and mom are okay mm-hmm. we're making sure babe you know baby and mom are okay but we're mostly at the the heart making sure that her mental and emotional baby. state is okay mm-hmm. as well as physically and just tending to them afterwards after baby postpartum care whether it's to help them you know with meal prep mm-hmm. or help them with you know nursing wow. you know breastfeeding if they want mm-hmm. breastfeeding the baby um yeah just it sounds just a lot like whole person care mm-hmm. whole person yeah whole person care taking care of like the mind body and everything oh, yeah. because um when a mom does give birth it, it takes so much energy and I don't think a lot of people understand how much you're giving when you're pushing that baby out. Like me, when I pushed Jace out, even though he was two pounds, 14 ounces, I was tired. <laughs> that little baby coming out of me and I literally pushed twice and he bloop, he came out. But I was so <laughs> exhausted and everyone says like when you push you like have to push from your bottom and everything like that but man when I say I thought I was gonna pass out because (laughs) I was pushing so hard I was like how do people do this like be in labor for like 24 hours or sometimes like days were your labors quick yeah my labor was quick Jace he came I went into labor didn't know I was in labor (laughs) <laughs> but uh, by the time I got to the doctor's office, I was nine centimeters. And then when I got there, she was like, she was trying to be so nice about it and not let me know that he was coming, coming. <laughs> and I was like, oh, what's wrong? I was in the middle of contraction, like, oh, what's going on? It's going on. <laughs> and she was like, oh, no. she was like, nothing, Chanel, you're fine, you're fine. Just breathe, keep breathing. She was trying to be so, I was like, I'm trying. I was like, but this hurts. And she was like, I heard her tell uh, the assistant, the medical assistant that came in, she was like, she's an active labor. And she was like, call 911. <laughs> she was like, you know, we're just going to call the ambulance. Um, and you can call whoever, you know, is coming to the hospital with you and let them know you're about to have your baby. I was like, what? What? Oh, <laughs> it's like, I'm about to have so nervous. Mm-hmm. I was like, when like, I it's s- not time. exactly, mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. wait a minute. I was like, isn't it too early? She was like, yes, honey, but he has to come out. He, she was like, he coming, he coming, he coming. Mm-hmm. And then um, she told the paramedic, she was like, yes, yeah, she's in active labor. She is nine centimeters. That's when I learned how far along I was. I was like, nine centimeters. How many centimeters is it that you gotta wait until the baby actually comes out? <laughs> Because how many is it? Is it 10? It's 10. 10 centimeters, yeah. Oh, so he was knocking at the door. Yeah, he oh, was, yeah. Okay. I didn't even he get checked for any of mine. I never got checked. Really? Um, 
Okay. When I was at home, the babies just came when they were ready to come. I never got checked to see how far along I was. Really? Yeah, I never. See, so did you get an ultrasound or anything too? At 19 weeks. Okay. Yeah, okay. The yeah. Typical 19 week ultrasound. But so after you that, got one ultrasound throughout your whole pregnancy. Technically two. two. So I had okay, one okay. in the beginning to see how far along I was. Like this was recently, like when you find out you're pregnant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And typically when you go see an OB, they mm-hmm. won't even see you until like you're about like 11, at least mm-hmm. 11, 12 weeks in, because you know they have to pass a certain stage where they're kind of like out of that miscarriage type of like stage yeah. mm-hmm. wish that you're still pregnant then mm-hmm. but I don't operate on that okay I need to know what's going <laughs> I on I need to know okay and so I went to the Rachel house in Kansas City it's a resource where they actually help you um confirm that you're pregnant and then you can get a you know ultrasound whether if it's like your normal one that they do outside of your abdomen mm-hmm. or intra- um, intravaginal ultrasound mm-hmm. and they actually try to measure the little fetus see, yeah. you know, see how far along you are from mm-hmm. there and that's how I you know that was my first one and then of course at 19 weeks you get another one but after yeah. that I never I think cause I had so I many ultrasounds during my pregnancy were you high risk? with um, my daughter I was cause mm-hmm. her heart was it was like a heart rhythm arrhythmia. arrhythmia it's the tack tack Tachycardia. There you yeah. go. She oh, had okay. that when I was her pregnant. Heart rate was fast. Yeah, and they put me on this pill, digoxin, to help slow mm-hmm. down her heart rate. But then it was like doing something to me. I felt different being on the pill. Mm-hmm. And so I was like going twice a week to get ultrasounds with my daughter, and then to get like the sound, like they were tracking like the the heartbeat. So I had to sit there for like was it like thirty minutes, thirty forty minutes at a time. Oh wow! I think it was actually an hour in that room just mm-hmm. so they can monitor her heart, and so they actually, I think she came. They induced me two weeks early for her because it was just mm-hmm. they couldn't get her heart. So yeah, because she, like, she was ready right. to go. Right, she was. She was. She was energetic. She's energetic now. Yeah, she <laughs> is very energetic energy. now. <laughs> I think that's what it was. She was it's just funny bouncing as, like, around. How your kids come into the world is kind of <laughs> like a stamp of like who they are right. as people. Really because is. my son was two and a half weeks early, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I was kind of low key praying to God, like, okay, well, Thanksgiving, <laughs> it's coming up, and Lord, I really want to eat. Really <laughs> want to so eat. Get this baby out so I can have. Some dresses, mm-hmm. amen. And amen. Like the flag right. on the nineteen, <laughs> perfect. So that worked out. But he's a go getter. He does. He doesn't wait for anybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, my husband missed the birth. Like mm-hmm. that should mm-hmm. go to show. Like he was ready to go. He's yeah. Ready. My daughter, on the other hand, is the <laughs> exact opposite. She was five days late. I literally tried jumping jacks. <laughs> I tried. Tried to run. Try to jump the baby out. I try to jump off the <laughs> right. stairs. Jump hurt my ankle. off the stairs. Yeah. Oh right. no! Bent my little, bent my ankle, my cankle. My Your ankle. cankle. <laughs> bent my cankle up. <laughs> trying to jump off some stairs. Oh my god! <laughs> I even had it. I even did. Uh, they, they, you're not supposed to do this. They say to, it's like a no no, but cash do not oil, do at I home. Castor oil. Do not do this at home. Right. And castor oil. My my baby was like. <laughs> Laughing your face. You're cute. Yeah. Right. Actually, I think my aunt tried like, to give me a take out. <laughs> full of castor oil. I'm like, no. So, my mom, I had a friend that was pregnant and she was trying to get the baby. <laughs> I don't know why we had castor oil. I have no clue. But she gave her some. She went into labor the next day. I was like, Mom, why you do that? <laughs> she was like, well, she wanted that baby to come out. She coming out now. I she? would not recommend no. anybody to do it. No. I really don't think you should unless <laughs> unless it's like suggested yeah. or recommended by a professional. Professional. For real. Because <laughs> she, okay. she was just under the impression, oh, it's not going to work. I'm going to do it. But it ain't going to do nothing. Mm. Mm. Baby. Yeah. Mm. That baby said, hello. But yeah, I did that and she it's almost like she turned her blanket over, like, all right. All right. And I'm like, really? Like, what else you got? Okay. Yeah. When it was time for her to go, oh, yeah. She was like, okay, I'm ready now. I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. My second son, he ended up being a C section bird. Because as he came, like you said, as they come in the world, it's exactly how they are. Mm. That's exactly how he is. Completely unpredictable. 
because the C-section was unpredictable. His heart rate kept dropping. They induced my labor, and they were like, okay, we're going to induce you right when they put that Pitocin in me. He was already head down. Pitocin, he flipped, and he became breech. I was so upset. <laughs> so mad she checked me she was like i feel toes she was like we need to rush her to the emer- to the emergency c-section <laughs> and i could hear his dobbler it was like Dee. so they induced you because his heart rate was mm-hmm. okay. and they were trying to because his heart rate went back up mm-hmm. and then it started to go down because he when he flicked the umbilical cord went around his neck no. oh no <sighs> And when he came out, he was blue. Oh my gosh, that's um, scary. Yeah, once they got him breathing and everything, I heard him cry. And his dad was like, he's okay, he's okay. Because I saw him, he was like, blue, blue. And I was just like, now? You wouldn't even be able to tell. Because all he do is run around yelling, screaming. <laughs> and he thinks he runs everything. And I'm just like, yep. Exactly how you came into this world oh, yeah. is exactly how you are. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, how do you guys deal with um, high risk patients who really want to do a home birth? Yeah. Well, if you're high risk, they probably shouldn't get one. Uh-huh. <laughs> with you, I've never dealt with a high risk mm-hmm. um, client that had a home birth usually okay. um if they already have well i'm if, especially i'm part of the birth team where i'm just dealing with non-medical because that's pretty much my goal is i'm totally not non-medical okay now yeah. fun fact is is that i'm actually educated in pharmacy like like education to the point where i'm like a pharmacy technician so oh, i had cool. like some extensive years like working at walgreens as a pharmacy tech certified mm-hmm. technician so i know most of like drugs interactions contraindications like i know that Mm -hmm. so i have that background to at least help me gauge on like medicines on probably Mm -hmm. what they should and shouldn't be taking but i never advise them like like i'm a nurse or i'm a doctor exactly Um, but if they're high risk um chances are (laughs) that will have to go to their ob or their Mm -hmm. midwife really Mm -hmm. on what they are comfortable with um Mm -hmm. midwives they you know they probably wouldn't take on a high risk at home because yeah. that's why you know liabilities mm-hmm. come into play. So you know, well, would that come into play with the high risk possibly having a like a doula and a midwife at the hospital? Perhaps? Yeah, you can have midwives at the hospital or at birthing centers with a doula like, mm-hmm. present. That's totally fine. Um, I mean, yeah, that's totally fine, especially for high risks. Mm-hmm. Now, for any other birth or anything like that, the the birther has the option of what she wants to do. I mean, anybody could really have a home birth if they want to. Mm-hmm. Um, typically, I know me personally, I would prefer if I'm going to have a home birth, I would prefer to have my wife mm-hmm. and a doula. There's some women who actually um, prefer unassisted mm-hmm. with their doula, but that's something that the doula would have to, you know, take on with that knowledge that they won't have a mid- there won't be a midwife there. Yeah, to medically like assess and you know sometimes with the midwife and doula they can actually feed off of each other however right. they without them clashing or stepping on each other's toes mm-hmm. and there's really no one to kind of like balance that mm-hmm. ideas or things to do for the birther but that's totally up to them I don't do unassisted <laughs> <laughs> there's just too much liabilities there but there are women who do that that are confident and they're experts at it and they just go for and just be a doula but they only focus on the non Give you deliver your medicine. baby. Like, yeah. You know, but. And I, she mentioned breach. So what if your baby is breached when you're doing a home birth? Oh, if your baby is breached, typically what what midwives or doulas would do is basically get you in very prime positions to spin your baby around. So whether if it's to <laughs> have you upside down or maybe just the bottom half of you, like a little more higher than the lower half of your body, mm-hmm. like in a seated position with your back on the floor and your knees up against the couch. 
Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing pelvic tilt or lift, butt lifts, mm -hmm. and kind of stay in that position to help the baby spin around, um, or have you, you know, do side by side positions like I do lay on one side for about 15 20 minutes, lay on the other side for about 15 20 minutes with your legs open, partially under, you know, with a peanut ball in between your legs. So mm -hmm. you're always moving your body to make sure that the baby is either descending or just so that the baby can turn around. But it just depends on how far along, I guess, you are in your pregnancy. Whether yeah. you can actually do that change before you get into labor or before mm -hmm. it's time. But, yeah, and they can also, you know, actually move your baby and spin it around for you. But I think a medical professional will have to do that. Oh, okay. my Turn goodness. That sounds so painful. I know. <laughs> it can be. But I think people usually have techniques now where you could actually do it without actually hurting the mom too much. Mm -hmm. But I heard it get me uncomfortable. Do they give you medication for that? Not that I know. Oh, <laughs> so we just gonna turn this baby? For, ooh. They might, but I, not that I. I know with me and my birth, like I had to get stitched both times. Mm -hmm. So what happens, like if your baby gets stuck, you have a home birth? Um. I never had a baby really get stuck because I just feel like there's various factors. Like I mm -hmm. know there are, um, there, there have been labors that I even heard, or, um, I haven't witnessed myself, but mm -hmm. where they call that the babies are sunny side up or OP, <laughs> meaning that mm -hmm. when they're coming out, they're like facing you instead of facing the other way mm -hmm. you're, they're facing like up and out <laughs> that's so funny sunny side up you could you know put yourself in different positions to kind of get them in a prime position so when they're coming out they're you know they're not coming out like this they're kind of coming in with their chin tucked in so they can mm -hmm. just come up through the pelvis mm -hmm. you know because um i mean your body's full of like hormones that loosens up your ligaments and your cartilage mm -hmm. kind of make them very expendable and very elastic so that's why your pelvis um, widens so easily because it knows that it's preparing for a baby to come out right so yeah positioning changing positions mm -hmm. you know on all fours you know cow cat bends and you know sideways positions and do positions on the peanut ball or even on a big yoga you know those big Oh, yoga the yoga balls, medicine ball. To widen your hips and rock, you know, mm -hmm. back and forth and side to side. Those are squats. fun. <laughs> you know, all of those things can help you prepare for baby. Those are fun. I like the medicine balls. I used to do that even when I wasn't ready to have a baby. <laughs> Maybe that's why he came, because I'm too busy bouncing around the house on the little ball. Yeah, those are comfortable, and it just helps you, like, just prepare the space mm -hmm. for the baby to come out of, widen, you know, widen. Another thing I heard was like going on regular walks every day. Mm -hmm. That was something that I did while I was pregnant with Jace. And I feel like that's probably why he came so early because yeah, that could be. I, I did that with my son walking too. Like I didn't every do that with Eden. Day. I just ate Popeyes, but <laughs> I ate what I'm on. I didn't really walk that much. And she was mm -hmm. a heavier baby for it, I want to say maybe because I did eat. Really? <laughs> I was, oh yeah. <laughs> what uh? Eight. What weight was she? She was nine fourteen at birth. What? Mm -hmm. You delivered a nine pound baby? Darn near um ten pounds. She was nine pounds fourteen ounces. So she was <sighs> like two ounces short of ten what? pounds. What? <laughs> yeah. And you delivered her at home? Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. That came out of your hoo ha. My whole my hoo ha. My whole hoo ha. Oh my, my god. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Oh, wow, that is crazy. It was, and I was like, it's over. <laughs> it's over. It's a wrap. I was like, and my midwife is Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. I was like, tell me how bad is Cheryl? How bad is it? <laughs> how bad? Tell is me because I can't look. Just give it to me straight. How many <laughs> stitches, girl? You got it. Girl. She was like, actually, um, no tears, no abrasions. What? You're fine. I was like, I see? Know. Yeah, Lord. So does out. your midwife, if you did tear, would your midwife stitch you at home? Probably or would, you, would. Yeah, she really, probably could do Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without, like, any, like, medication? Well, don't they have, like, They probably have, like, lidocaine, lidocaine or something like that they'll yeah. put topically and then just probably mm -hmm. stitch you up, I'm sure. Lidocaine. How well does that work? 
too much. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Topically, they, you know, they put that on your skin, especially when they want to, mm-hmm. like, numb you up. They'll okay. put lidocaine. Okay. I mean, even when you get your teeth done, you know, you probably yeah. have teeth pulled. Mm-hmm. They probably put something, like, some kind of gel over your gum or something before they actually stick a needle so it kind of takes the sting out of so kind mm-hmm. of like Amazon. Mm-hmm. your gum. Basically, <laughs> it's a stronger form of Amazon. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, because yeah. my mom, right now, she's going through a treatment for breast cancer and they were using the lidocaine to actually massage her arm after Mm -hmm. surgery to get her arm back mobile because it was so painful so when they put it on her she was like oh it's not that bad and the nurse is just rubbed I'm like girl you couldn't (laughs) do that when we came in here and now you up here throwing hoops (laughs) yeah so that I guess that really does work so, um, what is the most um, exciting thing about being a doula and also um, a piece of knowledge that you like to give our audience who are either becoming mothers as far as like their planning process for either the hospital or having a um, stay at home birth? Because I know sometimes other people's beliefs and what they think the mom should do, they try to, you know, impose their own beliefs on mothers so much. And I think it's unfair because then, like, a mother can be so steadfast on, you know what, I'm going to have a birth at home and everything. And then here comes, you know, your grandma or somebody is like, "Uh uh-uh, you don't do that. We ain't do that. So you don't do that. Because if something happened, you know, like, Mm -hmm. that happens so often. Because I know my mom, she tried to impose a lot of stuff on me, which made me a little bit more stressed out. Mm-hmm. When I was pregnant, so it's just like, okay, whatever you're thinking that could be negative, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Or don't discourage me from doing what I want to do. Because, you know, like, you want to be happy. Like, I made this choice. I did it. Here we are now. Ah, oh, so deep. <laughs> so deep. <laughs> um, the one thing I would love to tell any person that um that is pregnant that has already already had their baby they have children Mm -hmm. or planning to have them is to be i mean it's good to have a support system Mm -hmm. clearly but stand firm and be your own advocate and have your own voice i think the cool thing about being a doula is not only to physically comfort your clients and make sure they're emotionally taken care of but you want to educate your clients Mm -hmm. um this is no um i'm not no jabs on hospitals at all because i feel like they are a blessing and they are there to help and heal the sick but at the end of the day, hospitals are a business. Mm-hmm. And there are going to be things that they are going to be very, um, very, they're going to expound on and let you know. But there also are a lot of things that are not going to let you know because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it is a business. So our job as students is to basically tell you things that are not going to, they're not so like available up front. Mm-hmm. So if you are going to be in a hospital space, <clears throat> At least know what to expect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Expect what they may be going to be offering you mm-hmm. um, and what that does to baby, what that does to your body, what happens. And if you are looking for a natural alternative, there are options that you don't, that you can use. You don't have to do what the nurses or the doctors say off hand. And I feel like because we don't advocate for ourselves, we just take in whatever the healthcare professionals may extend to us Mm -hmm. and not to say they don't do a good job but it may not be for you and you just need to be aware right and just make sure that you at least have the education to make the best decision for you Mm -hmm. and your pregnancy at the end of the day because this is your pregnancy this is your body right you know if you don't like what a doctor is doing you don't have to necessarily just go with it even if you feel uncomfortable you can seek second, third, fourth opinions. Mm-hmm. You can get, you can be in labor, and if you don't like something, you can actually say, "I'm out." Yeah. Up and <laughs> exactly. go elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like there's a lot of women that don't know that they can. You, I mean, it's like going into a shoe store and you don't like the customer service. You think mm-hmm. the shoes are trash? Are you gonna still stay <laughs> stay there and make it work and try to buy some raggedy shoes, or are you just no. gonna go to another shoe store that? 
you like with the shoe styles that you want to wear Mm -hmm. with the customer service that that is extended to you Mm -hmm. it's the same it's kind of like that type of vibe so advocate for yourself and whatever that you want for your birth and for your experience stand firm on it Mm -hmm. um if you have a midwife or doula that you really like and you vibe with but they just don't do home births and that is your dead set option and Mm -hmm. you don't want to bend from it even if you vibe with that midwife or that you know the doula that's cool but if they don't do home births and you Mm -hmm. want one don't just say well i'm just go to a hospital no find more there's plenty others you know mm-hmm. and vice versa like there's options you always have options and if you're willing to like i said stand firm on what you want you mm-hmm. do the research that's what i did i knew from the gate even before even thinking about kids that if i was to have one i don't think i would like being in a hospital is no diss mm-hmm. but i just don't think i would be able to stay in there and just have contractions and just be still like, <laughs> and just be sitting there like okay here it comes yeah then, i don't think i would like that too much i want i want to be able to have a little more freedom yeah but i really want to be comfortable in the setting mm-hmm. and i felt like what's the most comfortable place i like to be at home, at home. Yeah. i like to be i want to have my baby i want to chill out and just relax and that's yeah. what i wanted and there was people that went against it. I know my mom was a little gun shy about it. Mm-hmm. She was kind of hesitant about it. You yeah. know, because I just feel like a lot of people just didn't know. And you don't know what you don't know until you know. Yeah. Um, so they all eventually came around. And I think, like, <laughs> I inspired some people after mm-hmm. having home births. And and now I have some friends that are considering and wanting to do it for their next children and oh. other children. You know, so I just think it's, it's pretty cool. But so it's all inspired to just advocating for yourself, really. Yeah. You so. are an inspiration. <laughs> right. <laughs> because, um, so do you think that is, like, something when you do make that decision, that's something that you should, like, have a discussion with your family to let them know this is what you're about to do? Because you know how when something is so new to them, they don't know how to accept it. Or they don't know how to allow what it is that you want to do or just let it be because um I think some families mm-hmm. like when you impose something so new on them mm-hmm. they're like what's wrong with you like you wh- you sure like wh- what's really wrong with you like uh-uh like this ain't what we do because I know some families one girl that I know she had I want to say two two births that were at home and then but her mother she had one birth at home and it was an unsuccessful birth um due to I guess complications or something she like ended that up to go to a hospital. yeah okay mm-hmm. and that's fine there have been transfers and home births too yeah that so happens. that's something too like I want other people to understand even if you start off at home and end up at the hospital that doesn't mean that you know you didn't do something right it just right. means that you know we just got to transition to make sure mom and baby are, are okay. safe because mm-hmm. i know i've seen on tv even like um some mothers they're going into birth and then it could be something as like critical as like blood pressure mm-hmm. and they have to transfer mom to the hospital and stuff like that so how do you guys keep track of like blood pressure and stuff like that like the midwives um, because also, like, if mom is getting, like, antsy or anxious with the pregnancy, because I know you deal with the mental and everything. Yeah, I'm dealing with you. And I'm just an anxious my, person. I'm not entirely sure how midwife specifically would gauge that to mm-hmm. just kind of uh, know when that they want to transfer a mm-hmm. patient. Um, I never had to deal with a transfer birth yet yeah, okay. personally, but I'm sure if it was something that they've been keeping track as far as like the, the mother's blood pressure or the baby's heart rate mainly and just mm-hmm. kind of looking at the mom and seeing, you know, what's going on and just making their observations on what's going on, yeah. they probably would assess and just, you know, let her like, know. Or probably just kind of give her probably wouldn't tell her like this is what you need to do but like, hey how are you feeling <laughs> mm-hmm. um so hey this is what we feel what's going on you mm-hmm. know, this is what the baby's doing we feel like based on this and this and this you know you probably want to consider and just picture you know considering a transfer mm-hmm. you know what are your thoughts and how do you feel about that mm-hmm. you know and then 
they'll try to like put it in the client's ear or something like that mm-hmm. of that nature. Um, and of course, if the midwife, depending if how communicative they are to their doula, then of course we would also try to prepare, you know, mentally prepare them for that too. Mm-hmm. Just say, hey, same thing we want to do for you. Right. <laughs> I know that the midwife just mentioned, you know, XYZ, how do you feel? Right. Do you want to, you know, do some humming? Do you yeah. want to do, like, just try to tend to them so they can kind of be relaxed, be calm. Kind of distract possible. them from the kind anxiety. Kind of distract them from the anxiety. Okay. Yeah, a little bit. But, as far as like having a support system of like people who are your family that may not be really down for, I mean, I know, um, I know I have felt not really for family per se, mm-hmm. but you know, like I said, my mom was just a tad gun, you know, gun shy about the home birth <laughs> and water birthing idea. Yeah. Um, because they just think that, you know, having home birth is just so reckless, but it's actually not. Um, we do have a midwife who mm-hmm. is, medically and professionally trained to deliver babies mm-hmm. and um passionate yeah they're passionate right because mm-hmm. a lot of people think like when they hear a midwife they don't put together they put together like medical knowledge knows what they're doing with nurse with the word nurse but when you say midwife they're like Okay, so this is just a person that's just here assisting. They don't really know what they're doing. They don't really know, like, okay, this person has medical experience. This person has to be training. They went to midwifery school to Mm -hmm. actually do this and graduated. And probably, I'm sure, if you know, as many times when you go into this, you you have a a midwife that you probably are. shadowing under and mm-hmm. assisting and actually has to have births underneath your belt to even get right. the credentials that you need to get. And the same with the doula. If you want to become certified, mm-hmm. you go through your coursework, you probably side with the doula or you pair up together and you just acquire your births and you record them as credit as going towards your certification wow. or whatever that you want to do. So my thing is that is that although you may not have your you may have your family that may go against what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Like I said, what's more important is that I think people need to realize is that when, like for me, when I had my children or when I was pregnant with my children, I already knew out the gate what I wanted, and no, and I'm in the mindset of like once I have my mindset on something, nobody mm-hmm. could deter me from it. Um, so I had you know more so healthcare professionals from hospitals tell me that I was dumb, like I was like being silly really? and I wasn't smart you know <laughs> and when I smarten up mm-hmm. you can have your baby at this hospital like I had people tell me that like I was just That's being like crazy. like I was losing it you know I had friends I'm like why are you gonna do that you know they didn't get it <laughs> you know but that was just something that I just didn't want to do I didn't want to be in no hospital I didn't want to be mm-hmm. with no IV and I didn't want to be sitting in no bed just taking this pain where I can just if there's natural measures where I can move about Mm -hmm. and I can you know focus on something else to make the process go faster or more or less you know more natural then Mm -hmm. I'd rather just do that and that's just what that was my you know my deal breaker right I didn't want no hospital now I planned for one in case (laughs) things go left yeah yeah that's why you need a birth plan and I went over it with my doula and my wife you know, I already had my go-to hospital. If things goes to go wet or go left, there was a go-to hospital. Mm-hmm. My midwife was affiliated or is affiliated with that hospital, so she had oh, okay. special so rights there are to go midwives there. that come from the hospitals. No, or she has are... her own. Like she has her own practice. Per oh, se, okay. But she has good ties with that hospital. Like, okay at the hospital sense. specifically at the time okay. so if I was to have the baby early she could be there to oh to assist to assist or deliver at the hospital if I had to do a transfer of care nice. and I had an OB too that mm-hmm. I used to see so I have an OB but I also you know I have a midwife yeah. so when mm-hmm. I'm pregnant I go to my midwife when I'm yeah. not pregnant I want to get checked for control <laughs> I, go to, my I go to my OB <laughs> and they, they know each other mm-hmm. everything is okay but like I said I did the research uh, and then also my midwife and doula was very, very resourceful too. Mm-hmm. So they gave me like resources to go to, to seek for assistance, whether it's like for a baby wearing education or childbirth mm-hmm. education or childbirth classes. And one um, resource in particular, Uzazi Village in Kansas City. Hey y'all. <laughs> <laughs> she was the one that referred me to that because they are, they support, you know, 
playing mm-hmm. with African American women. So my midwife, my midwife who's not white, mm-hmm. so, you know, gave me resources to people that looked like me. me. So right. she was very resourceful in that. So another reason why I chose her. She yeah, was, it's you very choose important. People, you got to choose your support system that yeah. would actually help you. Mm-hmm. It's hard, you know. Um, I see women all the time. Mm-hmm. Go through like struggles with their decisions, even after baby comes. Mm-hmm. Breastfeeding is like the most common like um, fight that I have with <laughs> women yes. because they like they want to breastfeed, but you know they live in a space where they have like multiple family members that don't like to see the breast breasts. Exposed, so yeah. it makes them feel uncomfortable, and then they're worried that they're not making enough milk because, in essence, they're not pumping or feeding their babies as frequently as they should mm-hmm. right? because they feel ashamed that, they're, <laughs> oh that their families make them feel so ashamed that they don't even have a support system that's built on encouraging her to nurse. Mm-hmm. On, yeah. You know, for example, so it's like, mm-hmm. it, yeah. It's yeah, to- my mom was not on board with the with the breastfeeding. She was no. not. She was like, you know, I did not breastfeed any of my kids. I said, okay, that's great. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. That's you. That's exactly. <laughs> that's you, that's you mm-hmm. ma'am. But I definitely breastfed both my boys, even if it was just pumping and giving them the yeah. bottle. However it works. Like, yeah. I encourage breastfeeding your babies or at least giving them breast milk however you need to give it to right. them. Of course. Um, but... Because I breastfed my babies 14 months a pop. Mm-hmm. And I didn't regret it. I mean, it was rough sometimes. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you know what? <sighs> Man, I'm sick of tired of doing this. I'm, of I'm still doing. trying to wing my daughter off the breast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't breastfeed. No. <laughs> it's just that I'm she, like, whenever she's it's around me, rough. she like sneaks her hand down my shirt. I'm like, girl. Yeah, you could tell a breastfed baby because oh they are always in their mom's shirt. Yeah, yeah or my they're daughter. Trying to pull. Mm-hmm. She's like squishy. She's like squishy. Yes, <laughs> squishy. Yes, I'm squishies. like, yeah, they're squishy, but there's nothing in there. It's for nothing you. in there. <laughs> it's over. It's all dried it's all, out. It's, a wrap. it's all dried oh out. Like we had an agreement. You, <laughs> you ended this. You ended this. <laughs> no backseas. Okay. Right. <laughs> So, with uh, doula care, do you guys assist mothers with postpartum care? Mm-hmm. Because that's really big. There are really doulas big. that do postpartum care, even um, if you already have children. Really? There's doulas that actually help with, you know... Emotional? Caring, yeah, okay. caring for your older kids or looking after your older kids while you're having your baby mm-hmm. or watching your kids. Yeah, so... That is so cool. Mm-hmm. See? Learn something new, See, something yeah, y'all ain't even right? know. <laughs> so you mentioned too before we got on that there are different types of doulas. Can you mention to them what type of doulas there are? Oh, yeah. So briefly, what I mentioned <laughs> is that there are doulas for pretty much all stages of life. Um, I know the doulas that we've been talking about today are most likely for women who are pregnant or after right after they have their babies. But there are doulas that assist in um, like death doulas, like even adults that are, you know, that have, you know, illnesses that are terminal that are transitioning into death. Um, there are doulas that also help with, um, even like loss Mm -hmm. of a baby, um, whether if it's been still birth or by miscarriage, or Mm -hmm. if they had an abortion and there's guilt from that, there's doulas to assist and to, um, emotionally support you with that. And Mm -hmm. then there's also doulas that they are specifically to support people who are wanting to have babies and they want Mm to, um, discuss fertility options or pre- preparation for fertility to have a baby and then there's doulas that do all stages really like they call them full spectrum like full spectrum fertility doula. pregnancy and postpartum mm-hmm. oh well, that's a well-rounded doula yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> actually the one that i want to actually really be good yeah. At. yeah i'm oh learning my it, goodness. but i haven't done any fertility like consoles or anything like that yet but that's mm-hmm. what i'm like i'm want to be certified in doing is being a full spectrum what about for those mamas that's like, I don't want to do the doula unless she's a Christian or he's a Christian. Oh, well, yeah. Um, there are doulas that have um, a Christian faith or any type of religious faith that that person may want mm-hmm. that doula to have or desire. Mm-hmm. So there are doulas that are faith based mm-hmm. that nice. you can have support you. Mm-hmm. Um, 
or do list that may not be faith based, but they're still open and want to support you either way. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if you just want to do that specifically, like ah, you know, I love the Lord, I love the Lord, Baptist <laughs> doula, yeah, you know, <laughs> tambourine shower right. doula, or whatever. However you want to do it, I'm sure there's yes. a doula for that. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, actually, on Facebook, I had one mom um, talk about how she used to always pray over her baby. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was something that I used to always do with my boys. I used to always pray over them, like, please let us just get as far as we can. Even though they said I'm high risk, let me get as far as I can. And then when it's time, just make sure they breathe in, please. Just make mm-hmm. sure they breathe in. Because she said that um, it helped her even when she was going through the birth. Mm-hmm. She said she had just had this overwhelming amount of peace. And calm calmness i said girl that was that heaven sent calmness girl that was heaven sent Mm -hmm. you asked for it he gave it to you and i see and i think that's good that she kind of just set her mind and um set her mind to being positive Mm because i feel Mm -hmm. like no matter what stage you are in your pregnancy being positive i actually i feel like will help you a ton Mm -hmm. um because our body is just one big muscle and i feel like the more like apprehension you have the more kind of like negativity the more i don't know what it, you know the what if and the what you know what could have mm-hmm. what if this could happen and it's like all of the anxiety actually builds up in your body and it will cause you to tense up and then when yeah. you're tensing up your body just clenches up it's like it's like your shoulders is tight and yeah. then chances are your body gets tight and mm-hmm. tense and then the contractions that are coming in actually kind of hurt a little more because yeah. you're just not relaxed mm-hmm. you know it really so. pays one thing because one of the biggest things on the show that we talk about is being self-aware. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the biggest things you can do as a mother and in going into pre- and in going into preparing to have a baby or even when you are having your baby, being just aware of your body, what your body does and how it reacts to certain things, being more self-aware in your mind. And how your body reacts to things will definitely help you have more of a positive outtake. And just be more confident in your body. Mm -hmm. Your body, my body knows exactly what to do Mm -hmm. to carry and birth my children. It's like, it's amazing (laughs) what the human body does, carrying and nourishing these babies. Mm -hmm. Like recently I found out that when you are pregnant, and let's just say a mom has like an organ that is that probably has a little bit of damage or Mm -hmm. the organ is probably trying to fail Mm -hmm. like what i didn't know is that you know when babies are in utero they have Mm -hmm. the placenta and within the placenta you know they their stem cells within that area i didn't know that is like the body sends takes stem cells away Mm -hmm. from that placenta and targets that organ that is either damaged or not mm-hmm. working properly. I forgot what is it called. I I, that we there is a term on for it, but show? I can't remember. I forgot it. Oh. I think it starts with an M. <laughs> yes, it does. Me. Oh, the one that you researched. I researched and I ah, mentioned it on the other show. I recently show. had met, studied met, that in my studies, and I'm like, whoa, that is so. Yes, I found that out, cool, and I was like, you know, start with an M, right? It yeah. is starting with an M. I feel like I want to Google it so bad, <laughs> but. <laughs> Look, I had to. I even wrote it down so I could pronounce I it correctly. Google, but that alone was like, that's awesome. Like mm-hmm. our body just knows what to do right. to heal, to heal itself and protect baby. Right. Like it's, yeah, we it's are. Crazy. We got superpowers. Period. That's why they call it superwoman. Right? Because when a man tell you you can't do something, say, I can have babies. Like. You can. can you can you have, have babies. babies. <laughs> can you? <laughs> can you have babies? Absolutely not. And if you would try, oh, okay. oh, they'll lose their mind. Oh my! Goodness. I always wanted to try the, you know, the contraction simulator. The, the simulator. Oh, my yes. husband, I low key wanted to do that. <laughs> and I Let's just get felt together like, and do it together. I feel like Let's I see. should just, you know. Because they think that it's so easy. Like, you're yeah. you're over-exaggerating, especially Jalen. He used to always think I was over-exaggerating whenever we had to go to the hospital. Because I would be having, you know, the Braxton Hicks contractions. And I would be like, I think I'm having a baby. Like, I think I should go even when I was in, like, active labor. It was funny because he was like, oh, you." he thought I was trying to get out of being at work. <laughs> 
I was like, are you serious? Okay. <laughs> I was like, no, like, I'm really having the baby. Like, this is happening. This he is was happening. like, <laughs> he was like, well, he was like, no, you're fine. He was like, just stay there for a little bit more time okay. until. I was like, you know what? Never mind. Never mind. I'll let take myself. <laughs> exactly. <I'm just> <laughs> let me call this doctor real quick and let you know for real, for real. And so, the doctor called him like. I'm sure he yeah. felt bad afterwards. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely. He was definitely. Like, I'm sorry. I didn't, know. I, didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know you were serious. I thought you just wanted to come home because I had bought you this game. He got me a game I really wanted. And I was like, I'm trying to leave work to play a video game. <laughs> and I'm telling you I'm having your baby <laughs> no. no like this ain't that but yeah what were you saying I was going to say how did you guys significant others handle the, um, their, your first birth cause I know mine he, he wasn't there he was close to passing out <laughs> really? What? Yeah, they, what? they had to give I think they Whoa. gave him like a cold towel or something cause he <laughs> oh, wait no. you, not, <laughs> you are not telling close. me <laughs> not you not telling me uh, six foot down six foot was wow was I, I go timber <laughs> oh no don't do down oh man <laughs> that is hilarious stop playing with me what Jalen took it like a pro he just ruined he his like reputation <laughs> Sorry, Definitely. Dominique. Sorry. Sorry, Dominique. Sorry. But she just she sold you out like a birdie. Exactly. <laughs> Look, you knocked him down a couple now. She, <laughs> now you now y'all here soft. <laughs> right. But Jalen, he he was a soldier. He was there. He saw everything down there. Even when I had my C section, he was there. He saw all my I was like, you a true one. You saw my inside insides. Cause when they did that C section, yeah, they was, put on. Yeah, he said, oh, yeah, they took all the stuff out, put it over there, then they oh. put it back in there. Oh. I was like, oh, and you just sitting there looking at it? You sitting there. He was like, yeah, so kind of, I know you inside and out. <laughs> that, that's that's cute. That was cute. Was that's like, adorable. Right. That's smooth. I was like, all right, all right, I'll give you that. That was good. That was smooth. All right. <laughs> But uh, I just want to thank you for coming. Yes, for thank having you. Me. I'm really excited about this episode. Yes. Ladies, um, if you are having a baby or you are thinking about getting pregnant or you are getting prepared to have baby, I no, want you guys to consider having a doula to help you mentally, physically, and just to give you a little bit more input about your body if you feel like you're not really educated or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, Can people find you anywhere if they're um, yeah, you can find me. I just have a regular Facebook page, Alisa Connor (laughs) Hansen on Facebook, A Lynn Hansen, A L Y N N E H A N S E N on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I do have another Instagram page, but it's like a baking page, Amali's Aroma, because I also bake. Ooh, okay. I gotta check that one. Me too. Um, and also just, uh, you know, if you don't mind, so Mm -hmm. I know you were mentioning something about, you know, women just having the option, um, to having a doula. I highly consider it. I know with COVID specifically with this pandemic, Mm -hmm. um, a lot of restrictions are in place with, you know, women who are having babies as far as limiting the amount of visitors they can have um whether if they're having you know the baby in the hospital and even when they get home Mm -hmm. you know so that limits the support that they need during their fourth trimester and i already know it's already rough enough yeah um just having a baby you know in general but then Mm -hmm. with the pandemic it just adds another layer of anxiety and stress so i really feel like mothers are in desperate need of doulas just to have their emotional um, yeah. just to have the emotional support that they need, especially us black women. Like we just need it. We need it. We need it. We need it. So, yeah. um, there are a couple of places where I feel like, um, Facebook groups that women can start reaching out to. Oh, okay. Um, one okay. of them is the Wisconsin doulas of color collective. They do provide mm-hmm. professional quality childbirth ed- education, and they do have doulas that could support mm-hmm. you guys. Um, any women that are interested and then also um i think it's called um maroon calabash is another health and webs uh, wellness website that do have doulas um mm-hmm. that are here to support women in milwaukee as okay. well so okay. check them out milwaukee check them out check, check them out. Yes, yes, out yes yes because like she said women of color i think at this point in time just with everything like the 
the aura that we're in right now you need yeah. as much support as you can have because we're worried about our black men we're worried about our babies we're worried about our bodies our mental it's a lot going on it is mm-hmm. yeah. what's better to do it than the comfort of your own home mm-hmm. <laughs> and to have someone who mentally supports you right because that's just so huge I individually too you get that individual like yeah the individual care yeah. that really helps I wish I had to do one. Right. Mm. <laughs> so, without further ado, guys, you can go ahead and you can find us on Apple and Spotify. And also, if you would like to be a guest on the show, you can go ahead and DM us on the Naked Eye Facebook page and on the Naked Eye underscore underscore Instagram page. Um, and continue to support us in the year 2020. Then we have to do our inspirational quote. Got to end with our oh, inspirational yeah. quote, ahead, girl. And our tips. And yep. our naked truth. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <honey. All right>. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> this inspirational quote I found on care.com. Mm-hmm. I also posted it on my page. And I thought it was very nice. So I'm going to read that to you guys. It says... Whenever and however you intend to get birth, your experience will impact your emotions, your mind, your body, and your spirit for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's very, very true. That is. Because you remember, I don't know, you don't remember the pain of birth, yeah. but you always remember the day and how happy you were. Yeah. yeah. So, to end with our tips, anybody have tips for us? I think we gave all our tips throughout our discussion. I have a tip. What's your tip? My tip is always do your research and consider your options once again. Um, do what's best for you and your baby that, you know, mm-hmm. the health of your baby and yourself. Yeah, doing what's best for you is key, especially with pregnancy. Just, I want more women to be more assertive with what it is that you want to do for your baby Mm -hmm. when you're assertive you get stuff done and Mm -hmm. you let people know it ain't no detouring me from this so you might as well get with the program right so especially (laughs) when you're pregnant because you want to have that good memory right so i think that's yes good tip I would have to piggyback off of that and I would just want to emphasize that when you say to be assertive Mm -hmm. it kind of just kind of circles around with me saying to be an advocate for yourself Mm -hmm. and knowing what you want and what you know like intuitively Um, unfortunately um, black women are not heard in Mm -hmm. the healthcare (laughs) um, realm and a lot of things get dismissed and overlooked um, Serena Williams had to speak up for herself when she felt something was wrong and doctors weren't listening to her and come to find out she had, I think, a clot or something like that that wow. they found. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that speaks to us specifically as African-American women, you know, mm-hmm. with the highest infant mortality rate and other yes. things like that. We just need to really, like, if we just Conscious. feel like we're not being listened yeah. to, you have the power to seek a second or third opinion mm-hmm. until results are showing up. are showing yeah. mm-hmm. so please advocate for yourself it is needed even yeah. if you have Your to life seek literally counsel literally depends on it mm-hmm. yeah even seeking counsel through physicians who are african american because you know everybody is not the same mm-hmm. and i think the makeup of you know all the different cultures i don't think our bodies really work the same in some instances like with blood pressure pregnancy i think everything is different for a lot of different cultures because we you know we got different eating habits and different things that we like to do and some of those things are unhealthy (laughs) (laughs) so i'm gonna go ahead and say that be assertive be assertive so one thing that we do on the naked eye is we tell a naked truth about something that we do within motherhood that we probably have done recently that we're not ashamed of that is just something that needs to be done with babies <laughs> so if you have do you have something that 
you were yes i do it's not with the babies it's actually with myself okay Okay. naked truth about self naked truth about myself is you know yesterday we had our photo shoot yes and i was feeling myself (laughs) so like that (laughs) photo shoot made me feel like so rejuvenated Mm -hmm. and i felt beautiful I know, and That's I haven't so really exciting. felt that in a while. And even though people may compliment me here and there, I, I mm-hmm. didn't feel it. But yesterday, I felt it. There you go. Yes. See? So, oh, I'm so happy that did truth. that for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> so, I will say my naked truth. Hmm. <laughs> What's my naked truth? What's my naked truth? <laughs> I, okay, so I would say my naked truth would be at this point in time being more redirective with Jace in virtual school. Like, I've been, instead of like getting on his butt, like, <laughs> instead of doing all of that, <laughs> I've been, you know, like redirecting, like just noticing that the redirecting of him. Mm-hmm works so much better for him because he is he is my pride and joy (laughs) he is my pride and joy but he is my more sensitive child he is the child that you know wells up at everything so I'm learning to be more soft with my redirection Mm -hmm. instead of being more stern Mm -hmm. and I am teaching dad how to be more soft because he is like military like and I'm just like you can't do that like he's already broken down because he's tired so if we add more to the right stress to the way he's gonna just break (laughs) so yeah I'm 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 working on that me too me too because I'm pretty like I'm a pretty stern parent I would say but my kids listen so that you know (laughs) <laughs> they listen but I'm starting to learn how to be stern without being like over the top yeah. <laughs> what's your naked truth oh yes my naked truth I I can do two I can okay. do one as far as the kids mm-hmm. so with the children my naked truth is that when I'm just kind of just over it and I'm mentally just taxed mm-hmm. um I do not want to yell and go crazy <laughs> yeah sometimes I would just go in the bedroom mm-hmm. lock the door lock the door maybe <laughs> sometimes put a chair underneath the doorknob because they kind of do know how to unlock the door <laughs> yeah <laughs> And um, just pretend like I, I'm not there. I'll put up my headphones mm-hmm. and blast some music for like a good 10 minutes. Whatever damage is done, I'll deal with it when I come exactly. out. But I'm going to just lock the door. So that's something as far as like the kids. So I don't like go crazy all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't pride myself on being centered all the time. Sometimes I do show my behind <laughs> and I have to apologize later. But usually that's what I would do when I'm just over it. As far as like for myself, my naked truth is that I'm a little more selfish mm-hmm. with the time that, you know, my spouse is at home. So mm-hmm. if I know he probably has some place to be in the next couple of hours, sorry, hubby, that's what I do. I'll take and take time for myself. The other day I went to run to the bank and get my feet done. Yeah. <laughs> and I did that before coming home so he can go out and go to work. You know, I mm-hmm. made sure I... I put the kids down just in time i didn't even tell them what i was doing specifically but mm-hmm. i was like oh if he asks i'll answer but i don't need to tell him no. right <laughs> yes, exactly. answer. Yeah. and i just went you know went to the bank and then got my feet done and came back mm-hmm. refreshed he was like oh where did you go so i went to go to the bank and got my feet done mm-hmm. oh you did them? Mm-hmm. but you can go to work now mm-hmm. right <laughs> you know yeah. so i'm just kind of just kind of Finding that time, finding the times where I yeah, can just kind just of take advantage and because you know my spouse does it so well. You know I'm trying to right, you know, trying match, to figure out how he do it. Right, right, right. He be trying to jet off and run off, so I'm trying to jet off and run off too. <laughs> you know, I want, you know, so they good at that. Oh they? man, they some ninjas, ain't yes. they? Yes, you be like, oh, they, well, I didn't even know you left. <laughs> tiptoe, tiptoe. I be like, Real. yeah, I blink. He already in the driveway. Ooh. <laughs> you just, I just saw playing you playing the game on the couch. Yeah. Right. So as I mentioned, oh, can you watch the kids? Now you got something to do. Oh, mm-hmm. I mean, you got something to do when you watch the kids. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> I can say okay. I'm the same way. I'm selfish in that area. Like I try to find stuff for him to do with the kids or something, just so I can see that you know you need to do this, you need to do that because I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm selfish in that area too. I'm glad you pointed that out because now I know. Yeah, <laughs> now I know. it's like you kind of peep. I mean, <laughs> kind of peep where you need to. Mm-hmm. Dip out, okay. If I do this, and you know, usually he's done by this, and have the kids napping at least, yeah, at least one of the kids. Okay, I can, you know, skate out, skate out, <laughs> you know, go to Cheesecake Factory, and, yeah. you know, eat my cheesecake in the car, and then just come back home, right? And I ain't got to share, <laughs> exactly. Got, you know, I had my little thing, you know, everyone was cool, you know, I had my little fun, I got away from the house, I got a little peace, you know, so I'm mm-hmm. learning, especially with the kids being older, just kind of knowing when to like dip out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for coming and being on the show. And with that, guys, we are going to end. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, guys. Thank you for supporting us in the year 2020. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.